Um, the second invited talk is by Stefano Mangiola from the Walter and Eliza Hall Institute of Medical Research. Stefano is one of the authors of cryptomics packages, and these include the tidy bulk, tidy single cell experiments, and uh, tidy summarized experiments, and the uh, tidy SURA. And I think we'll be talking about that today. So his talk is titled in, um, Interfacing Surat with the RTID Universe. Thanks a lot for the introduction. Thanks for uh, the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, so I will take opportunity today um, beyond the invitation about talking uh, about our uh, latest uh, publication, which is Tidy Surat, to talk about more in general um, tidy single single cell experiment adapters as we have developed a uh, few adapters for the bioconductor framework as well. So I'm uh, talking today, but uh, most of this work and our communication and our workshop is done together with Maria Doyle, which also um, contributes to the package development. Okay, so uh, before I start, uh, just a couple of resources. You can find more information about uh, these uh, tidy transcriptomics in R. Uh, we just opened a blog where we, um, we wrote a post about the in-depth description of, of this uh, ecosystem, um, and we will uh, continue to do so. You can find it at this link here. Uh, we have um, uh, published a couple of papers about uh, tidy bulk and these uh, tidy surat. Obviously, we go in depth about those over there. And we also have uh, online few workshops that we have done uh, the last couple of years, but those uh, that material is accessible through the blog and are all uh, themselves are packages. So you can uh, download them and, and um, execute them uh, to learn more about this. Okay, so I will start to describe what are the two parts of the tidy transcriptomics. One is the tidy part, and the other one is a transcriptomic uh, analysis and infrastructure in R. Uh, so the uh, tidy R is uh, a um, philosophy and a way to uh, program in R, and as well is, a, um, is a contributed with a full ecosystem of software called the tidyverse. Uh, the four, four principles that they state is to reuse existing data structure, uh, compose um, simple function with pipe, uh, use functional programming and design for humans. So the, probably the main data structure that we see and we use uh, with the tidyverse is a data frame that they will um, implement through Tibble in a, a user-friendly uh, manner. And uh, the data frame is uh, described by having observation as rows and variables as columns. And so uh, this variable could be uh, characters, integers, and so on, uh, but also could be any uh, R object. For example, there could be plots. The variable could be another table. So we can do nested analysis in a self-contained and quite elegant way. Uh, could, for example, be a linear model, but it could also be a surat object, a single cell object, for example. So you can see here that this data frame is uh, very flexible and almost becomes a database where we can organize our uh, data and our analysis in a very uh, relational way. Uh, just to mention, uh, most of you for sure will know, but uh, a brief difference between the base R and tidy R. Um, for example, we might have a data frame and we might want to subset uh, some of the rows. Uh, in uh, Bazaar, it's typical to do a data frame, equal data frame, where data frame class is equal A. Um, and we might want to create new columns, such as data frame X is equal data frame A times data frame B. And we might decide to plot uh, two, two of those columns. We can plot data frame X and data frame Y. On the other hand, uh, tidy R is more geared toward piping, so passing one input to the, uh, from one method to the other and uh, using um, functions as, as building blocks. So we have our data frame input, we pipe it into a filter operator, uh, which is piped into a mutate operator where we can just um, declare the column names and we can pipe it through a, a plotting operator, for example. So you can see some uh, difference already. We have a bit less redundancy and a more streamlined uh, way to manipulate and visualize data. 
Uh, so what about the uh, transcriptomics, uh, data analysis and manipulation? Uh, there are many frameworks to uh, analyze um, single cell data, but two of the most common ones are uh, the included in the Bioconductor Repository and Surat. So the data containers for these two, for Bioconductor is a single cell experiment, is a, a very complex object that if we uh, plot it on screen, uh, we get return a, a simple summary of it with some dimensions and some information about uh, uh, features and cells. Uh, on the other hand, Surat, well, similarly, it outputs a summary, a briefer one where we get uh, some information about how many cells and so on. Uh, for the analysis, um, I simplify here. Uh, but uh, the bioconductor repository um, is uh, contributed by the community, uh, which software interface with this single cell experiment data container. Uh, while Surat is a bit more monolithic, is developed by Sajja Lab, and um, the community can also contribute uh, through the Surat wrappers package. Um, what about manipulation? Uh, they uh, look um, Quite different, so we have to learn some of the uh, domain specific grammar. Uh, for example, if we want to expose uh, the uh, cell wise information, we might call, meta, uh, call data uh, in this case and for Surat double brackets. If we want to uh, retrieve uh, UMAP dimensions, for example, uh, for further calculation analysis or uh, whatnot visualization, uh, we call reduced dimension or embedding for Surat. Uh, we can subset some uh, cells from our data set uh, with the uh, function called subset in both cases. Uh, however, in uh, for a single cell experiment, we have a double comma here. Uh, we can modify in a trivial way uh, the metadata in the same manner between the two frameworks. However, for example, when we want to do some more complex uh, manipulation like is typical in real world analysis, uh, Again, there is a, a slightly different syntax. So we, we let's say we have a, um, our uh, single cell data and we want to join some information about, let's say the clinical um, profile of patients. And we want to continue our own analysis uh, just for the cell that has this uh, clinical information associated with those. And so we might do update the metadata and do a C bind with our uh, clinical uh, data set. And we have to match, of course, the rows of the two data set, um, you know, for a successful integration. And we can um, run another common subset to just filter out the cells that do not have clinical information. On the other hand, for Surat, again, we update the metadata, uh, but because the metadata of Surat is itself a data frame, which is compatible with Tidyverse, we might do directly a left join, specifying sample as joining column. Uh, but again, we have to subset then the uh, cell the cells that do not have the information. So that's a very uh, simple uh, comparison here. Uh, all right, so what happens when we uh, import ID Surat and ID single cell experiment? Well, these two objects uh, will be shown to us in a different way. So the cell wise information will, bear, will be exposed to us when we uh, print the object on screen. Uh, and this object is a, a table abstraction. So it uh, looks like a data frame that we can interact with. On the header, there are some summary information. And you can see here as uh, the uh, biconductor representation and Surat representation uh, look the same, except this uh, header, of course, it, it uh, mentions what object is underneath. Um, so we are going toward a uh, harmonization uh, of these two objects through a, a tidy um, uh, a tidy structure. What about the analysis? Well, the analysis are the same as before. So these two packages, they do not uh, do analysis. So whatever uh, workflow you were using before, you keep using it um, in exactly the same way as you are still working with single cell experiment and surat objects underneath. Uh, what about data manipulation? Uh, again, for example, uh, if we want to expose the cell-wise information, uh, those are exposed by default. We just uh, input data into console. Uh, if we want to select some uh, columns for further analysis, 
we just use the powerful select command from uh, dplyr. We can filter using the filter uh, command, mutate, and so on. And all these uh, functions, they are put uh, valid single cell experiment and SURAT objects. So you can continue with uh, your flow. Uh, and if we want to do some co more complex operation, that this is just an example, but in this case, uh, we want to integrate clinical information and filter, where in this case, for example, we have an inner joint function where it just do that. We are integrating cohort information by sample and selecting just the cells that are common between the two uh, data sets. And again, the manipulation looks exactly the same for a single cell experiment or SURAT. Um, as we are using, uh, harmonizing the two through a um, tidy R uh, lens. Um, just to, um, for completeness, I list here all the operators available. Uh, we have most of the operators that are available for uh, deep IR and tidy R. We also have joint features, uh, so we can join transcript wise information to our table for doing, again, computation and visualization uh, if we wish so. Uh, and also we can input these objects directly to ggplot and plotly uh, to do custom visualizations. In this case, uh, uh, I show you here, we are selecting three columns for, from our object and a single cell experiment will be returned to us, um, of course, uh, abstracted here as a, a table. Uh, we can merge data set as we would do with uh, data frame. So we can simply uh, bind, ro bind rows to different um, single cell experiment objects in this case. And uh, we will just uh, add one to the other. Because this is a very trivial example, a bit silly. We are just adding a data set to itself, but uh, you can uh, imagine the applications. Uh, as I mentioned, we can join features. Um, in this case, uh, two of these genes from uh, uh, this assay. And you can see here that uh, this uh, transcript abundance has been added uh, to our cell-wise information. And then we can do calculation, manipulation, and visualization based on those as well. And also, uh, I won't go too much into detail, but for who is familiar with nest and map, this concept is also abstracted for uh, this single cell container. As you can see here, we can group uh, these uh, tidy surat uh, according with, for example, cell type, and we might do an operation of each of those uh, subsets uh, quite elegantly and in self-containment. Okay, so after this uh, brief introduction, uh, let's just clarify a couple of uh, concepts uh, before we go on. So um, what are tidy surat and uh, tidy single cell experiments? So they are not data containers. Uh, you will keep working on with the surat and single cell data containers. They, they are just that abstraction. So interfaces we can uh, interact with. And they are not analysis tools. You will uh, keep going with your um, familiar uh, workflows without changing, changing a comma. They are that abstraction, as I mentioned, and they do manipulation, integration, and visualization. So they, we can still use whatever we were using before, so nothing is taken away, uh, but now we have a link to the huge uh, tidyverse ecosystem. And so the question, can we go from a tidy surat, for example, to a surat and vice versa, is not relevant here, as we never leave surat or single cell experiment to start with. All right, so um, let's take a step back. As, um, as uh, has been mentioned, uh, these packages are part of the a, a, a more extensive uh, ecosystem of software. Um, so on the, this diagram represent on the bottom the single cell part. So we see our um, single cell experiment and SURAT that interface with their own ecosystems. Uh, but thanks to our adapt adapters, they can also now interface with Tidyverse. Uh, this is also true for bulk, bulk RNA. Um, the uh, summarized experiment with tidy summarized experiment, they it can now interface with tidyverse and be manipulated with the powerful tools. Uh, and for bulk RNA, we also developed a, a very uh, extensive uh, workflow uh, analysis workflow. 
which is based on TADI principle. Uh, this workflow includes a lot of uh, publicly available tools, and uh, it includes uh, most of the functionality uh, we might, you might want to use for a standard workflow. Aggregate duplicates, keep abundant, keep variable, scale abundance, dimensional reduction, clustering, um, removal of unwanted variation, uh, test differential abundance, the convolution and some testing of the convolution of tissue composition, uh, for example, with survival analysis and, and whatnot. Uh, quite extensive set of uh, gene enrichment over representation and rank. And so all these um, wrappers um, uh, um, give the possibility to execute all the common software in a very streamlined way um, that can be piped one to the other. Okay, so uh, the uh, second part of the presentation, I will dedicate to an example of a real world analysis that I've recently done uh, for a uh, paper about breast cancer, where the prob problem was after we have annotated the data and do all sorts of, uh, all sorts of analysis, we decided to focus more on uh, T gamma delta cells, which were not uh, very well um, characterized uh, for breast cancer in single cell studies. And so we have our um, surat object that is represented as such. Uh, we might uh, uh, import tidy surat. Now our uh, cell-wise information is exposed to us, as you can see here, as I showed you before. And what we have done is to try to identify a signature for these uh, T gamma delta cells um, that are not very present in uh, public available signature databases. And so we have, um, from uh, the literature, taken uh, a very uh, simple signatures with uh, six genes. And in this case, we can use joint feature to add the transcript abundance of those genes to our object, so you can see here. And now we can proceed and do calculation with it uh, and do uh, all sorts of manipulations. So in this case, uh, we want to uh, calculate a signature. So this publication from Pizzolato um, proposed a sort of formula for combining uh, these genes into a signature. As you can see here, it's very simple. We use mutate to create a new column in our uh, uh, ID representation that will be added to the cell metadata. Uh, uh, the call name is signature score, and we simply do a um, rescaling some of, some of the genes and subtract them uh, with the rescaling of uh, some uh, uh, other genes. For example, uh, T gamma delta RCD8 negative, as you can uh, read here. Uh, and we obtain this signature score uh, column now, and we can use now for further analysis. Now we can pipe these objects into, for example, a SURAT uh, plotting functionality uh, where we are coloring cell types now distributed in uh, two uh, dimension by these signatures. And, and you can see here that we can visually identify one of those cell uh, groups that is abundant for the signature. Uh, but uh, because uh, now this SURAT representation uh, can also uh, be uh, interfaced with ggplot. It's quite easy to replicate this plot with ggplot. And uh, of course, uh, this is quite useful when we want to customize further our, our plot and not be uh, kind of uh, restraining away from the uh, ad hoc uh, visualization of uh, the different platforms. Um, so we can go forward and pipe this object into uh, some more um, functionality that the tidyverse offer to us. For example, we might want to gate uh, these cells for a quick uh, reanalysis of those cells to see what uh, characteristic they have. And so again, we uh, mutate. So we add a new column called gate, and we use tidy gate uh, that takes as input our UMAP columns, and uh, we color by the signature and we can interact and draw a gate uh, across these cells. And so, uh, as you can see here, a new column will be created called gate, uh, which in include in this case one uh, for the cells uh, that are inside the gate. 
Uh, okay, so uh, we can go on and pipe, uh, as you might imagine now, the cells into a filter, um, uh, a filter operator, uh, and filter just the cells that are inside the gate we have just defined. And uh, this study gate also gives the possibility to recall the gate we have just drawn for uh, reproducibility. Okay, just to conclude, we can pipe this to this subset of cells uh, to a, uh, for a quick reanalysis. Of course, this will require a full reclustering, uh, but sometimes it's used to have flexible language to um, get quick, quick, quickly to explore the data and uh, take further decisions. In this case, we can quickly reanalyze this group of cells, uh, finding variable features again, uh, reintegrating, uh, reprojecting these cells on two dimension, reclustering and so on. And uh, as you can see here, we went you know, forward uh, defining some of the marker genes of these three clusters. Okay, so this is just an example, uh, but it's um, showing to you how we can quickly compose a quite streamlined workflow by using uh, a lot of the powerful tools uh, with Tidyverse, integrating also Surat uh, analysis, and um, producing a quite readable uh, and, uh, and uh, self-explanatory workflow that other people can also understand quite clearly. And uh, without, in a way, uh, focusing too much on the coding detail, but uh, getting the big picture. Uh, the last thing I want to show you is just a quick example of another possibility we are opening. Uh, we usually visualize two UMAP dimension to kind of, kind of visualize the heterogeneity of our data set. Uh, but because now Surat through the tidy Surat or single cell experiment can interface with Plotly, uh, we can decide if we want to calculate not two but three UMAP dimensions, and we can uh, quickly provide our UMAP columns as from our tidy abstraction, colored by label, and uh, we can, if we decide, explore uh, these UMAP dimension in, in uh, interactively in, in three-dimensional plot. And this has been quite useful for me for a couple of studies where I had uh, quite huge data sets. All right, so this was a quick introduction uh, to uh, this uh, platform. As I mentioned, we have quite a lot of resources online. And really these tools are, you, uh, we understand the, the power of these tools such as in Tidyverse uh, with tool integration. So even each operation can be done uh, with alternative uh, grammar. When we put these things together, we get a lot of power and a lot of flexibility. Uh, so I uh, finish here. Uh, I have to uh, thank uh, many people from this, uh, for this project. Uh, the Papenfuss Lab, of course, uh, Tony Papenfuss, uh, Ramier and Ruining, uh, that are part of the uh, publications that uh, came out. Maria Doyle, that is a, a very key uh, person for uh, this project. We uh, deliver workshop together uh, and um, she contributes uh, a lot to the pub package uh, development. And or the Biconductor community, uh, in particular Morgan, uh, Daniel and Laurie that reviewed uh, our packages. So spent quite a lot on time, uh, of time on those. And uh, I welcome any question. Thanks uh, for the thank you. Thanks, Stefano. Uh, we actually have a couple of questions here. So um, the first question, and I'm sure it's on the mind of many of the, the listeners, is that, that all these powerful advantages that you get from using the, uh, from the, the, the tidy uh, style of writing, does it come at, in, at some expense, like uh, speed or uh, memory? Yeah. Uh, so the answer is no, because uh, for single cell, uh, by default, we um, we just interact with the, the cell-wise information. So really those, uh, the data set can reach easily a millions of rows without any problem. And we can add if we decide to transmit information, but the answer there is no. And uh, the objects uh, are actually untouched in a way. So we just uh, fill information into the metadata, for example, uh, but they are still Surat objects or single cell experiment. Uh, for um, the bulk data, we um, expose both transcript and sample information 
Uh, and so we get uh, easily quite huge data set if we analyze TCGA and whatnot. Uh, so uh, they became very quick uh, for all operation we might want to do of integration uh, and uh, manipulation. And uh, we have optimized them. So definitely now are uh, very uh, quite quick. So I would say no, uh, the, the advantage uh, are surely, um, you know, they are, they are more than, uh, than the, uh, Lethal uh, overhead. Okay, great. Uh, there is an interesting discussion going on on the Slack channel now about the native vibe as opposed to the migrator vibe. So, would you like to weigh in? Um, well, uh, yes. So, I, I put the the uh, Bazar pipe just for because it's nicer to uh, you know visualize on screen. Um, so uh, you can, uh, of course, many of those who are discussing, they uh, know more than me, the differences uh, for the pipes, but you can read online, there has been discussion. For most operation, you, there is no a difference. Uh, so because most of the tidyverse, they accept the input as first argument. Of course, uh, you know, there are different overheads, but uh, it's quite detailed. Um, I don't think, um, makes a huge difference, at least for my workflows. It's just prettier to put on a presentation rather than uh, the other one. But I, I commonly use the, 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 the migrator uh, pipe, but um, it's just for uh, historical reason, personally. Okay, so another question here from Matt Pritchie. Uh, the tidy gate function looks useful for exploratory analysis, but would present some challenges from a reducibility standpoint when writing methods for a paper. Um, how, so how do you use it in practice? Uh, well, tidy gate. So I haven't showed you here, but once you draw the gate, uh, the little gate list object is saved into temporary files and you receive a message um, that tells you, you can use that object into the function and the gate will be drawn, will be reproduced as you have done it. So you don't need to draw the gate multiple times. So. You get that object, import into your whatever project, and that uh, the gate function will read that object and draw the gate for you. Uh, so this um, should, this is uh, guarantees reproducibility. Uh, you know, if you have the same input, you get the same output in this case. I hope uh, it answered the question. Okay, great. So uh, thank you again. Uh, please, if you have any more questions, you can contact Stefan on the Slack channel. And um, in a few minutes, we'll be back with uh, more talks. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone.